I'd like to provide a little bit more information regarding the results and discussion section. I would recommend everyone to visit this website and uh, this video uh, to get uh, some general information about how to approach the results and discussion section. But I would also like to add a few more points. Since most of you are doing qualitative research, and given the length uh, of this uh, particular assignment, I think most of you uh, will be able to create a results and discussion section into one section or one level, one heading. But you will need to divide up your results and discussion section into sections, probably two or three sections, each section being a level two heading. Uh, you may or may not need level three headings, but uh, I would recommend that you have at least uh, level two headings to uh, better organize your, your work. Make sure that you have a good balance between results and discussion. So the results are your findings, the information that you are analyzing, and the discussion is your interpretation, what it all means. And uh, you can explain your results by uh, addressing the, the question words, how, when, why, where, uh, etc. So when you begin developing your results and discussion section, there are basically two uh, approaches that you can take. One is to try to incorporate into one paragraph some results or findings and your discussion about those findings. If you find that uh, the topic, your claim or assertion in your topic sentence requires a lot of results, perhaps you have one paragraph that simply talks about results and then the next paragraph you discuss uh, the findings or results in the prior paragraph. So those are two different ways that you can approach this and you can mix those two. So perhaps you have uh, full paragraphs of results and discussion section or maybe include those within the same paragraph but you can also you can mix those two approaches. But again making sure that you have a good balance between the two. Now, as I mentioned on this web page, uh, you can reference the main purpose of the study, primarily the research questions. Remember that uh, the results and discussion section are to answer your research questions. But you might also incorporate or discuss the problem that you're uh, addressing. You are generalizing the most important findings. Remember that uh, you don't necessarily need to include all of the findings, but only the most relevant, most interesting findings that you, uh, that you come across. You're, you're going to explain the findings, so again, at addressing the question words, you're going to give a better description uh, about the findings that you have. And then you can compare those to what you expected. Uh, when you started this research, you probably had some expectations about what type of results you thought you might have. So you can discuss that. You can compare and contrast what the actual findings were based on what, what you had, and had anticipated uh, going into the study and also you can compare uh, your findings with other uh, research that has been uh, published. So when you are presenting your results and discussion section, generally you'll only need to include a citation when you're referencing other studies or you're referencing uh, some expert as part of your literature review. And so if you're just explaining some of your information, uh, then you won't need uh, necessarily a, a citation, nor will you need one if you are uh, comparing it to what you had expected or what you anticipated when you were uh, going into the research. The order in which you present this information, generally speaking, is well, each paragraph will have a topic sentence. You'll continue on with evidence if you think of the meal plan. So you begin with the main idea. You follow up with evidence. The evidence in this case will be some direct quote. Remember for most of your, your cases you, you did uh, some transcripts. You transcribed uh, interviews and focus groups and you coded if information coming up with categories and themes. This information, these themes and concepts are now what you're going to organize into ideas and these ideas will come in the form of a topic sentence and uh, the evidence will be direct quotes that you uh, that you obtain from your transcripts and then any discussion or in your interpretation or how these findings compare and contrast to what you expected or how they compare and contrast to other studies or again if you're referencing it to uh, to your literature review. It's not necessary to relate every single finding that you come across to your literature review. Only if it's relevant and interesting and uh, you feel that it's, it's necessary. 
Finally, you need to follow some form of logic when you present your results in discussion. Now, some examples of uh, kind of a logical flow might include starting first with the least important information and finishing with the most important. Perhaps you want to start first with what's most important and finish with the least important. Uh, you can also present your results in discussion section in terms of the specific to the most general or from the general to the specific. Uh, depending on your topics, you might start with non-authentic to what's more authentic if you're talking about material design or development. Maybe you talk first about the classroom experience or formal learning versus informal learning. Uh, so there are many logical flows that you can take. The, the most important thing to remember is that you have a reasoning uh, about the logic in which you are presenting your results in discussion. Again, these are some things to consider uh, when you're developing your results in discussion section.